Welcome, my name is Colleen Tauke and I'm the sewing specialist at Fonz & Porter. In this Quilting Quickly tutorial, I'm going to show you how to put together floor pillows and they're made with a, a wonderful plush fabric. For the pattern for these projects, you can visit our website and we are going to begin then getting started with 10 inch pre-cut um, squares of the plush fabric. Now these come, um, a lot of times you can find them bundled with the, an array of colors or um, you can find um, 10 inch squares pre-cut out of uh, various lines of plush fabrics. And they come bundled and usually shrink wrapped because they can be kind of messy. So this is your favorite tool. As you go to open them, if you run a lint roller along the outer edge, now this is just coming off the edge, it's not coming off the center, we're not damaging the squares themselves, just run it along the outer edges of your pre-cuts and it will pick up all the lint and you won't have to wear it in your sewing space. So run it back and forth until pretty much you um, don't get any more lint off of it and then you can begin working with it. Now the pre-cuts um, plush are, um, they have a nap to them. So when I run my hand in one direction it feels very smooth, but I run my hand in the other direction you can notice that it changes color and kind of um, pulls the fur back. Kind of like when you pet a cat or a dog, one direction and not, not so comfortable in the other direction for the pet. This is um, something to be aware of when you're putting together the um, nine patch configuration so that all of the blocks will have the same brush, the same nap going in the, in the same direction. So in the back of your mind, be thinking about the nap of the fabric. Now, when it comes to working with plush fabrics like this, they have a knit base, which means that they have some stretch in one direction and, and not so much in the other. So what we're going to be doing, these are going to be um, the first row of, say, a pillow, like one of the ones behind us. And I will show you the back side here. I have gone in and stabilized the outer edge. And when we look at that back side, one side has quite a bit of stretch and you can start to see the roll along that edge. So if I were to try and sew it without being stabilized, I can get a lot of distortion. Now the other direction of the fabric, that knit base, has a little stretch but not a lot. But what we can do is we can take pretty much all of the stretch out by stabilizing. What we're going to be using is strips of a non-woven in fusible interfacing and I've cut these into one inch strips. Now if you want to learn more about working with plush we do have um, a so easy um, video that is called working with plush and you can get more tips from that video also. But we've cut one inch strips you can also get this um, pre-cut in your favorite sewing supply center. So or you can buy the yardage and just cut one inch strips and make sure you cut it lengthwise of the product it doesn't have stretched that direction. So we're gonna cut those the size of the block itself. They don't have to be super exact. Close counts at this point. It's going to be all on the inside of your finished product. Now this is a very lightweight interfacing. It won't add any bulk to your finished product. That's the last thing we wanna do is create more bulk and make it harder to work with. The idea is to add it a very lightweight stabilizing mechanism. Now on the back side you'll find that it has kind of a bead feel to the back of it. That is the glue that you want to adhere to the back side of your fabric. Now go according to manufacturer's instructions on the setting for your iron and the amount of time it takes to adhere it. You may want to check, uh, even turn your iron down a bit or test on a, um, a scrap or another piece of the fabric just to um, get kind of a good feel for how it works. But just lightly touch, I'm not smashing the fabric, I'm just lightly brushing it and it will adhere to the back side. And I'll show you that once more. We're not adding, again, we're not adding the full weight of the iron, we're just using the tip and the heat to adhere those pieces to the back side. And then finish it off with the last two bars just overlapping a little bit on each end and I'll show you the one that I have finished here the orange and the yellow see I've got those just overlapped a little bit and now when I tug on it notice no stretch <laughs> now it's time when we can pretend it's quilt fabric and we can put these together so 
when we're going to be putting two blocks together, remember I talked about nap and the direction of the brush of the fabric? You want to make sure that you have this, the nap going in the same direction. So as I brush my hand across these, these are now going in the same direction so I can join these pieces together. So what I'm going to do is put them right side together. And a lot of us like to try and sew without pinning very much. This is one place you do have to take out your pins. The nap of this fabric is quite fluffy, which causes the two fabrics to kind of ride one over the top of the other. And what we want to do is hold them, because you've stabilized them, they are true 10 inch squares, so we want them to both start and finish the same length here. So about every two inches or so, if you go to um, the Sew Easy of Working With plush, it will also show, tell you, remind you about the pinning process. Very important. Why? Because I know I've tried it without it. <laughs> so pinning is a good idea. And then um, you are going to want to set up your sewing machine just a little bit differently. You're going to want to use a walking foot or an even feed foot. In this case, um, Baby Lock has the even feed foot, which looks a little bit different and a little bit larger than what you're probably used to. But your walking foot that you do use for machine quilting, that's what you're going to want to set, um, put onto your machine. And then we are going to be using a one half inch wide seam allowance instead of one quarter, one half inch seam allowance. And then you're going to want to set your stitch length um, a bit longer. Your default setting on your sewing machine is usually about a 2.0. You're going to want to take that up to about a 3.0 to a 3.5. The reason for that is that if you do have to take out any of the stitching, they're, they're short enough to hold everything together, but if they're a little bit longer and you have, if you have to take anything out, you can actually see the stitches. If they're too small, they embed themselves into the fibers and you can't get at them and you will cause a damage to your fabric. Okay, setting up half inch seam allowance and you may have to double check to see where the half inch mark on your sewing machine bed actually is because we're so used to our quarter inch seam. It seem, it, it, when you look at it you think that's such a wide seam allowance but it will reduce the bulk and we can press more accurately and nicely when we get to that step. So half inch seam allowance and we can stitch right down the first seam here. You can just take out your pins right as you approach them. Not too much before though because we want everything to stay stable. Just like that. And as we take it out of the machine you can see stitched right down half inch seam allowance. And what we're going to be doing is opening those seams up. Now that's another thing that's more like a garment sewing um, technique is to open seams up, but if we were to ride them towards one side and then we do the next row, we start to build up a lot of bulk and we don't want to do that. Then we can take this over to the ironing board. Again, we're not going to use the full force of the iron, we're just going to use the heat of it to open up that seam allowance and it will just lay nicely open for us and get a nice finished product. Okay. That would be part of a row, and I've got two rows then here joined together already. You can see the seams laying open nicely on the back side, the stabilized edges there, and then we would just create the three rows that we need, finishing off to make our nine patch floor pillows. Now, these are floor pillows that have a lap back to, the, to finish them on the back. And I will look, show you real quickly what we mean by a lap back pillow, if you haven't made one of those in the past. The directions tell you what size your, your two backing fabrics need to be. And then you're going to fold each of them in half. Now I have kind of a small workspace here. So each of these fabrics was a large rectangle and they've been then folded in half, wrong sides together. And they're identical. So when we have a second one here, and what we're going to be doing, it will tell you how far to overlap the folded edges. And so you overlap the folds, and I've marked them with a pin here so that I could find my placings like this. And then you can just come in here and um, do a quick 
um, basting line here to hold this together. Now this is the back of your, of your pillow. You would then lay the right side of the plush fabric after you've quilted and done some fun things. I've done um, on point diamonds here and just some simple cross hatching on the second one. You would lay it right side facing, stitch all the way around the outside, and since it's a lap back pillow, this is your turning mechanism and pop it out and you have a floor pillow ready to go. Thanks for joining us today. For more of our video tutorials, visit our website.